Hey guys, welcome back to Masonic Curators, where we preserve our Masonic history through telling the stories of some of the items that we've collected over the years. Today on the program I have two things, and they are uh, things that I acquired just before becoming a Mason or directly after. Um, I petitioned my lodge, Waukegan 78, back in 2007, and when I was accepted I told my father-in-law, who came from a long line of Masons, uh, not a Mason himself, though, but who has acquired tons of amazing things from his father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Uh, in past episodes, I had shown uh, an apron from Arcana Lodge, uh, as well as a few other things. And Arcana Lodge just happens to kind of be where my father and his grandfather and father and great-grandfather all grew up. Uh, so he presented me... Uh, just before I became a full-fledged Master Mason uh, with this ring. What you can see on this ring um, is actually um, the square and compass on one side. It's very worn. It's gold. I hope you can see it. If not, as always, we'll put up some pictures. On the other side is the keystone from the Royal Arch. Of course, at the time, I had no idea. On the top is actually a... Uh, it's a... It's an open Bible is the curve, right? Okay, or a book of holy scriptures. But I'm assuming it's the Bible because it also has the cross, the initials I-N-R-I, as well as the, uh, there's something inside, and it looks like a plain gold leaf. But upon further inspection, it's actually where the color is actually worn off. It was a crown uh, with the uh, cross through it, the Knight Templar. So it's really cool. The inside actually is stamped 10 karat gold. And uh, I'll have pictures of all that up for you too. You can barely see some of the imagery here and here and here, but we'll have some close-up pictures overlaid in. So this was the first ring I ever got. And I, of course, went through the Royal Arch and the Knight Templar. And so, and it fit perfectly. I didn't even have to size it, which was amazing. Now the second ring I got, which I bought myself, was from Mr. Gordon Spurlock, brother Gordon Spurlock, who uh, is an older gentleman, and he still makes these rings. Um, a lodge can go to him and give them the information, and he'll create a, a symbol for you and all that. And it's a stainless steel ring. He was one of the first guys creating these stainless steel rings. Very simple. These are not sizable, by the way. You buy them in the size you need, and that's it. He can make them a little bigger, perhaps. If you send it back, you'll have to grind out the inside. But that's labor-intensive. And in fact, if you're going to ask him to do that, you might as well just buy another ring because they're $100. And, I mean, if you're spending a good amount of money on a ring anyway, uh, support the artist, right? So uh, the emblem on here has never come off. They are glued with a special adhesive that he uses. Mine has never come off. It's super worn. It's It's got some chips in the enamel. I worked outside as an OSHA coordinator for years, and it has been slammed, banged, and even saved my finger a few times. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Abyss, where uh, his wedding ring saves his hand from being smashed in this door. That's happened with this ring before for me. But anyway, I wanted to show you both of these rings and, and just tell you a little bit about them and their history, but they're very cool. If you like this one, check out Gordon Spurlock's website. Just type in Gordon Spurlock Masonic Rings in Google or your favorite search engine, and he'll be the number one result. Uh, so thanks again for watching. If you've got a really cool Masonic curator item, then uh, consider making your own video, sending it right here to this channel. Go to wcypodcast.com, click on Masonic Curators, or just go to masoniccurators.com or curators.wcypodcast.com, whichever you'd like. We have a million ways to get there. Check out the guidelines for submissions. Follow those. It's super easy. If you have questions, I'll even help you out. Um, if you don't have a Dropbox or anything, or you can't access Google, let me know. We'll figure it out. If you are a Grand Lodge guy and you've got a cool Masonic museum or whatever, we actually had a uh, past Grand Master from Missouri come on the program. Check that out in some past episodes. Who showed us some great stuff coming out of the, the uh, Missouri Lodge of Research Museum. Um, and I would love to have even more of those kinds of videos. So if you can, shoot them over here. Make sure you like and subscribe to these. And that's it. We'll talk to you all next time right here on Masonic Curators. Take care.